Hello, hello, everybody. It's 1.05 p.m. Central Time on the 21st of March, 2023. Hope you're doing well. It's a daytime update. Normally, it's 1.05 a.m. Here we are Tuesday here in the United States. Wednesday already internationally, and I hope the week is going all right for you. We've got a few earthquakes to talk about, so I'd like to at least turn on a display capture, see if that works for me here, and make sure that you can see what I see on the screen before we get going. For those of you who are new here, we're using Earthquake 3D, the program. I don't get anything for recommending it. I don't know Richard Walton, the creator of it, but I would recommend that you use something like it so that you can at least see the current earthquake activity put on to a three-dimensional representation of something. And we can combine feeds. That's the most important part on this. We combine the USGS feed with the European feed and any of the others that are on the list. And it gives us a much better picture of what's going on because the USGS and the Europeans don't all report the same quakes and you don't get a full picture of what's going on if you're just using either of their sites. You have to jump between all of them, and that's why it's a good idea to have a, a program that puts them together and puts them all at the same time. So we're looking at about 48 hours worth of earthquakes right now, and we just had a 6.5 back over here north of Afghanistan, right by that previous Tajikistan large earthquake. They call this the Hindu Kush region. The location is Afghanistan, so it is a different location than the previous seven at Tajikistan. I'd like to get the coordinates on this and just put them in on Google Earth. Go see if there's anything of any significance there at the earthquake epicenter since it's a big quake on land. It is out in the middle of technically Hindu Kush region, so it should be fairly rural. That's the good news. The bad news is any of the towns that are nearby are going to be most likely cobblestone stack structures, which don't fare well above 6.0 level activity. Let's see if there's any nearby large towns. I've got my borders and labels turned on. Uh, this is, well, the nearest province is called Darawan, Darawan. It doesn't look like there's any large cities nearby. That's good news. Okay, now let's back it out and just see overall where we are. Okay, the nearest, uh, well, look at that. We've got a town called Yemen, Yemen and Zabak. So they're, again, small. They, they look really small. The satellite imagery on here is just showing us like some small farming-type towns. So that's what's around here, and they will likely have felt the quake out about 100 miles in all directions. Let's measure 100 miles, and that's just a rough estimate. Uh, again, it could be more than that. It could be less than that. But, well, here's 165 kilometers, and in miles, 100 so that just gives you an idea of how far out people would likely feel this quake and have some effect on it. And it's right on the plate boundary. Let's go open the plate boundary map from the USGS and just show you where that is up here where the earthquake I'll mark in blue. That's the northwest side of the Indo-Australian plate just beyond the plate boundary up into Afghanistan. Now previously, Tajikistan had its break with a 6.8, that's just to the north, you see the country of Tajikistan. That was about two weeks ago, 6.8 to 6.9 struck up there. So really we're talking about, what, 200 miles or 300 kilometers of area breaking in the last two weeks in the mid-range 6 to 7.0 level from Tajikistan down to the south. Clearly the plate boundary is doing something there, while at the same time over to the west, over at Turkey, we had the previous two sevens. Now, look, spreading out from there. Over to the west, two different things happened. A new five struck on the S-shape plate boundary right next to our arrow. Let's just show that to you there. The reason we have an arrow there, that's the shape of the plate, but that's the way the earthquakes go. Like a wave guide goes around the outside edge and up out of Europe anyway. So we broke at the plate boundary here as well, or I'm sorry, the Craton boundary there as well as down to the south on the plate boundary, broke at the Ionian Sea. The Ionian Sea is about a magnitude and a half, well, two magnitudes under what I'm looking for. So this is not 
the earthquake we're looking for, even though it is directly in the spot one day after I issued the warning, two days after I issued the warning on Crypto Alchemist show, I talked about, he had just asked me real time what to look for, and I just named out the spot in Greece. It was one of our spots we're watching this week, and this is a spot we're watching for a potential large earthquake to take place. Now it gets hit, but it's just a 4.5. I mean, it is earthquake forecasting, but I mean, you want to get it down to the magnitude, and again, we're two magnitudes off. If this is 6.5, that's exactly the quake we're looking for. We're looking for upper 6 to low 7 to strike there, and again, 4.5 hits the area. So what does that mean? Well, it means the wave is reaching into here. However, now we have to watch a slightly different spot. And I will make a video on this now. Again, that's what I'm doing this video for mainly is to tell everybody we have to watch slightly south now, I think. So previously, we we're looking where this 4.5 is. Now I'm shifting the area ever so slightly to in between the where all the rings overlap. And that's more like next to Crete. I mean, what, the difference is minuscule. We're talking about less than 100 miles difference, but I am trying to get it down within 200 miles. So I would also look on the north side by 100 miles. That puts us into Albania, Bosnia, South Italy, but they'll all feel it if it's a upper six to low seven. Everyone along this, this red line will feel it all the way up to central Italy and all the way back down to Crete and the Aegean Sea. So I was looking right here in the middle where this earthquake is marked in blue now. Now I have to shift the area ever so slightly to the south just to be between our current sets of earthquakes. That's the way we do the forecasting. We look between our current sets of quakes. And again, that's why I also have to watch up here on the north side. But I think it'll break on the south side because south side's where we're moving. We're moving on the south side all the way back. Let me show you. We're moving all the way back over to where the blue earthquake is now marked over to the east. This whole area is shifting. And I'm looking for a break to happen out in front of it. Whether it's 100 miles or not is, again, a minuscule point here on the front end tip. I just have to make that announcement. Now, a new 6 or 5.8 struck all the way over on the opposite side of the planet over next to the Nazca Plate in central Chile. Let's jump all the way through the planet or over to the other side. And I would call this somewhat of an antipode. Not exactly, but... A new, well, now they have it at 5.6. Let's just call it a mid to upper 5 struck right next to our travels underneath point. And travels underneath point got hit. X marks the spot right down at the edge of the plate boundary. Let me show you on the USGS map again what really got hit. Again, that 5.1 last night. These two areas, the 5.1 down here at the South Sandwich Islands, right here. You don't see it on the USGS map. But the other one you do, marked in blue, both areas connected across the edge of the plate boundary. And it's being pushed, obviously, in two similar size quakes, so one within a half magnitude of each other going down across. Following perfect, again, we're just going straight from there down to here. And the whole area is being saturated. Back to the USGS map, whole area from up here to down here being saturated with a wave. And the wave I'm talking about is a very low frequency, ultra low frequency hammering wave that's coming up from the underside of the plate. It's spreading out like a standing wave in a tank, but the tank is uneven. It's Mother Nature's tank. So in the laboratory here, in a perfect rectangular tank, it's uniform and uh, following it perfectly. Well, in the same thing could be said for Mother Nature's wave in her wave tank, but it's an uneven wave tank. However, it spreads out evenly across it, and that's why we're seeing the earthquake spread down to the south and up to the north. Speaking of up to the north, the earthquake that struck up in Ecuador was pretty serious, guys. It was several days ago now, three, four days ago. We got a upper six to low seven in Ecuador right by our warned area. I do have to clarify, though. People were asking me, did I warn Ecuador? No, I warned Colombia right here. I warned Colombia going, I said, between Panama and Colombia... And then I said further at the end of this week, so in the next few days, over here to the east, over in Venezuela. But I said first we had to watch here at Colombia, Panama. And then what happened? Oh, and the magnitude was going to be similar in the magnitude that struck down here over by New Zealand. What was that? That was 6.9. There it is. Let's get all the other earthquakes out of there. So when this hit, oh, now they brought it up to a 7. But anyway, when this hit... We talked about watching over and across, and I said, watch where the big arrow points, and that points into technically up here, where we then go up and around. So I'm off by a country. 
spot on in the magnitude, spot on in the time frame, spot on in the region. I'm just trying to get it down to 200 miles. I'm a one-man operation. I'm figuring this all out on my own. It's in the face of everybody trying to... Oh, if you only knew. Anyway, in the face of everybody trying to stop it, let's just put it that way. Not everybody. That's a generalization. See, here online, we speak in general terms sometimes. Sometimes we do the whole lump it together even though we shouldn't thing. Okay, anyway. So let's recap. Big earthquakes on both sides of the plates. A new 6.8 struck a couple days ago up here to the north. Now down to the south, 5.8 hit. They just downgraded it to 5.6, whatever. It's within the magnitude. It's a magnitude difference on both sides. Going over to the west, we have a pretty big earthquake in the Mideast. This is one in Afghanistan that which struck today. Over to the west, a new spread of fours going out across Europe, indicating that the wave that I showed you in this wave tank, this very low frequency wave, I think it's electrical in nature in some instance, is passing around through the plate, and it's dropping off the same sized earthquakes all the way along the way. So think of it like this. 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, 5.0, and when it gets down to the end of the tank, it reflects back into itself, and when it reflects back into itself, all of a sudden you get 5.2, 5.2, 5.2, 5.2, it goes up. That the amplitude increases as you reflect and push more energy into the tank. So, this is the tank, and we're pushing more energy in from down below. And that's where this video starts, with the hammering action. So we're coming up from down below, focusing in up above, which means there's something down below, electrical-wise, very low frequency-wise, that's focusing in on the underside of the plate and then coming up through the plate. And that's where we get our deep earthquakes. So those deep earthquakes, which you see raised high off the globe, they matter, or off the planet, whatever you want to call it, that you see these, they matter because those are the points where the wave comes up hammers into the underside of the plate, and then spreads out. Now let's talk about the other areas where we were warning and where we talked about getting hit. North Island of New Zealand all of a sudden started to move after your 7 to the north, and we were watching for the North Island to get hit. It's been hit multiple times over the past several days, going up to 5.0 or near 5, as well as Christchurch, as well as down to the south. So that wave that I showed you in the tank, spread out about evenly across all of New Zealand, but it goes down across the uneven wave tank of New Zealand, down here to the south. Same size quakes going from the North Island pretty much all the way down to the south tip of New Zealand. And it's spaced out like that standing wave in a tank over the course of two days' time. Pretty wild, right? Up to the north we go, Taiwan and Japan. Two different things happen. First of all, the waves coming up to the north we're expecting Japan to get hit. And I have a warning going just off the coast of Japan for up to near 7.0, possibly plus. But I topped it out at 6.9. We have four more days to go in that watch as well. We're watching for three different significant earthquakes to strike in the next week. So one is over at Venezuela, all over in South America, all the way over in South America. The other on the opposite side of the planet, all the way over Greece. And then the third spot is this. All three are going to get hit in the next few days, and all three should be in that upper six range or greater. So the wave is reaching up. It's spreading out across the diamond shape plate boundary. You see it here. We got a 5.2 on one side over at Taiwan. This means a new 5.2 should strike somewhere over here by Guam, the tiny island of Guam, going further north, just north under the volcanic island chain. Well, some of them are islands. Others are submerged. The Izu Ridge but all eyes are on Japan. We're watching off the coast of Tokyo for a new significant-sized quake. Check Kamchatka off the list. Even though it's not really been hit, it got hit behind it up in Russia. Zrazvuti. Minyazavut Mikhail Yanich, a.k.a. Agent Dutch Sins. Ah, the motherland. Ah, I'm not from there, huh? Not from there, but my middle name is Yuri. My parents cursed me in the Cold War. All right, anyway. Not all Yuris are Russian. That's, that's Russophobic. Well, what is that? Uh, stereotypic, whatever. 
Ah, uh, okay. Well, I lost my train of thought here. Ah, oh, yeah, that's right. Did I get your attention, though? When I lose my train of thought, that's when yours picks up. It's a group effort here. Hundredth monkey. By the time one person, for the hundredth person finally listens, this is going to stick. So we got a five right back behind where I issued the warning. Again, I issued the warning for the peninsula here, and it hits right behind it. That's the quake we're looking for. Now, make note. 4.7, 4.4 on one side, add them together, it equals 4.84. 4.3 on the other side equals 4.97. And then back behind it, 4.9 to 5. Uh, one more time, I need to show you the USGS plate boundary map. It's going to make sense in a second why the earthquake struck back up here, back behind the pinnacle tip. Going up across, out into the middle of si eastern side of Siberia. You see the earthquake is nestled nice and neat in between the two plate boundaries. That's, wouldn't you say that's almost the halfway point between the two? If we were going across, the, the, half, the exact halfway point, if we were just going like as the crow flies between point to point, we put it in the middle of the bay of the Sea of Ok... Okohatsk. Come on, class, say it with me. <laughs> Come on, everybody. I'm from Missouri. Help me out with this one. The Sea of Oak Tusk. That's how I've been saying it for the last 12 years. Oak, Oak Hot Tusk. Okay, anyway. We're halfway between the two, and the wave is spreading out. Now, how do I know the wave is spreading out? Look over to the east. Remember the wave. One more time. The stand standing wave. There it is. Standing wave on schedule. There it is. You see it. All the same size going through the tank and reflecting back into itself. Now look at the spacing of the quakes from the USGS for today. Coming out of Japan. Going up into Russia. Back across the Aleutians. Back up into Alaska. Wouldn't you say that's like a standing wave of earthquakes going across the whole plate boundary in a day? It is. It really is. Now, you can see it much better on here, I think, personally, if we get the smaller earthquakes out of there and just look at the 4.0 and greater, that you'll be able to see the spacing is somewhat equal, even though we're across an unequal mass, and they're all about the same size. Within a hair of a point of each other, then yesterday's big quake out in front of it. Big quake out in front of it, reflecting back into itself. Next stop, Yukon. Should break out front again. We should see something like a 5.5 break out over here on the edge of the North American Craton. Now, the edge of the Craton, I talk about it a lot. But before we get into the edge of the Craton, we have to talk about this up here in Greenland. Now, this is next to where that tsunami had happened, but it was a glacier fracture. I'm just wondering if we're getting more glacier fracturing. I don't know. I'm just supposing. I can't, you know, verify that or anything. But just have to point that out, that that's over by the spot where we got our glacier fracture and tsunami a few years ago. Literally a huge chunk of ice, huge, like, like a kilometer wide or less, maybe a little less, caused a massive tsunami to go through the whole area. And people actually died in that when the wave came up. It was pretty big. Anyway, we're looking for Yukon to get hit. This gets into the North American Craton. Let me go ahead and get a graphic on here if I still leave. I might not even have the graphic. There it is. I had it queued up on a hot button, but for some reason the hot button stopped working. I don't know what's going on. This damn graphic has been the most difficult graphic, and I'm going to just gonna make, remake it. Now, what I'd like to draw your attention to are the earthquakes of the last 48 hours in the United States. I'm going to turn off the magnitudes. Just understand that the size of the rings equal the size of the earthquake. So, for instance, let me just show you what some 4s and 5s look like. Uh, here's what a 5 looks like. Here's what a 4 looks like. Here's what 3s look like. Here's what 2s look like. And here's what 1s and 0s look like. So get, a lot of numbers get on the screen. I'm going to turn off the numbers, and we're just going to look at the last 48 hours worth of earthquakes. But we can look at the whole week if we need to. But I think you should be able to see that there's a match of earthquakes going down across down through Texas, back over and across up into the Northeast United States. Wouldn't you say? And wouldn't you say the line of earthquakes matches the edge of the Craton somewhat? Well, not just somewhat. Through Colorado, Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, up the East Coast, and over on the West Coast. 
Now, over on the west coast, it gets a little bit more complex. We have the deformed edge of the craton, the purple part. Now, the purple part is transferring the energy from the west coast over and across the edge of the North American craton. This is one of my biggest discoveries and got me in so much trouble and denied still to this day by the professionals, quote-unquote, the professors who came stepping. And they said this was chance, by the way. That was their excuse eight years ago when I presented multiple years of this to them to review because they were calling me a fraud saying that earthquakes don't transfer across plates and that they're all random. They're not related to each other in any way. Now, what I found out is that there's a separate force causing the earthquakes. It's not that one earthquake's causing the other. It's that all the earthquakes along the way in the wave tank are being caused, or all the earthquakes in the wave tank are being caused by the greater wave. And that greater wave is coming from somewhere else entirely, a world away. It's just transferring into the North American plate. And then it transfers across the North American plate. And we get the same sized earthquakes within a hair of a point of each other going from the West Coast over into the Midwest and then maybe taking a step down by a magnitude once we get over to the East Coast. So, Colorado got hit. 4.0 earthquake and a 3.1. 4.0 was downgraded to a 3.8. We'll go look up the origin information on this and just see what the local stations show. Look at that. So we're going to go with body magnitude or we're going to go with the local stations around the area. Now what I would do is I would throw out the high end and I would throw out the low end. Low end, I mean obviously. Three, no. High end, going as high as, well, let's see. Fives, 5.2s. We throw out the high end. Don't worry, we're going to toss out these high ends. I just got to see how high we go. Now this matters because I issued a warning for a five. So here we're going as high as 5.3. Toss that out. We'll also toss out the 5.1 and 5.2. But guess what? We're also going to toss out the 3.8s and 3.9s. Guess where that leaves us? It leaves us somewhere in the upper four range as most likely. I mean, how, how could this many stations be wrong and a cubical nerd who's actively being forced to calculate earthquakes low comes in and revises the magnitude down by a full magnitude? Now... How many thousands of times has this happened in the past several years since the feud began? Since they called for my arrest? Oh yes, in case you didn't know. The USGS tried to have me put in prison for 20 years, saying I stole their logo. Violating US code such and such. Improper use of their logo. Yeah. They tried that. Anyway, uh, long story short, here we are, downgraded by a magnitude. I have to go look up the earthquake epicenter. We have to go look it up. Where is the location from? I wonder what the nearest town is to this earthquake because I've warned a specific town for a 4.8 to 4.9, a 5, and a 4.8 hit. They downgraded by a magnitude. What town did I warn? Anybody know? I'm not bragging. I have to drive this point home that this is deliberate downgrading into a spot where I issue a warning for a record earthquake or a near record earthquake. You know, upper four, low five is not exactly small for Colorado. And it hit, and it knocked things off shelves and broke things in people's houses. See some of the video on that. It's over on Twitter. Not going to step on anybody's copyright. But I wonder what the nearest town is to this area. Oh, there it is. Oh, right there. Trinidad. Wow. I wonder how far it is. Let's measure in miles. Eight miles away from Trinidad. And the town that was warned was Trinidad, Colorado for an upper four. Now, why did I warn for an upper four in Trinidad, Colorado? Look at the edge of the craton. I didn't say the F word. I said freaking. I said freaking. Look at the rusty brownish color there that goes down through Colorado. It goes right through the middle of Colorado along the Continental Divide, and it makes a U-shaped bend down through Texas. The reason I warn there is because of this. First of all, we're going to leave the graphic on. We're going to get all the smaller earthquakes out of there, and we're going to go back two days. 
incoming five up here at the oil pumping operations up in Canada, Alberta, right along the BC, Alberta, just to the east at the oil pumping operations. And I showed that. I zoomed in on it and showed you the earthquake epicenter. Showed you the pumps right next to the earthquake epicenter. And then that prompted me to issue an, a warning down to the east-southeast on the edge of the Craton down in Colorado for a five or an upper four. And then it hit. So they can go ahead and downgrade it all they want to try and, you know, whatever. But it's a feud at this point. So when they do that, if I did it, if I upgraded the earthquakes on my own to make it fit my forecast, everybody would say it was not valid. Be me confirming myself. And that's kind of what they're doing to propone their position. They're literally changing the earthquake epicenters by a magnitude in the areas where I issue warnings, and they're only doing it at spots where I'm issuing warnings. We've been keeping track now for well over a thousand different examples of this. Okay, now, and again, now, why would they do that? Well, they said that there was no spread of earthquakes going across the plates. Now, you can clearly see the same-sized earthquakes going across the plates, not just in the United States, but over in Asia, over in the Mideast, it spreads the same way. But the problem is, is that professionals said this couldn't happen. And in order to maintain that it's not happening, they have to, well, what, what would you call that? Lie? Would that be considered lying? I mean, it's like, it's, it's science-y. So is it lying? Is it like uh, faking? Uh, what do you want to call it? A uh, hoaxing? Uh, hogwash? I don't know. There's all kinds of scientific terms we could come up with uh, I'm sure there's a slang dictionary that I could fill in with a bunch of words to describe what it is. But Let's go up into the Pacific Northwest. Talk about the quakes, shall we? You guys want to look up the earthquakes here in the Northwest? Sometimes we find interesting things. Other times, there's nothing there. But in this case, I just got a feeling. I've got that feeling. Let's go take a look. What is 37 kilometers north-northeast of Amboy, Washington? And check it out. It says magnitude negative 0.0. .0. So what, what's really going on here is the computer's reporting in to let us know nothing's happening in Amboy, Washington. Is that what it is? Is this a case of the computer just checking in to let us know that everything's okay and that there's nothing happening here? Nothing happening here? It's like, is this like Leslie Nielsen standing in front of an exploding fireworks factory saying nothing's here, though? AI stands in front. No, nothing's here. Well, look where we are. We're right on the edge of the crater at Mount St. Helens. If it is a nothing, it's a nothing burger because this is not going to explode. Not now. There would be thousands of these small earthquakes, plus significant sized earthquakes all the way around it, I think, if there was going to be a blast at Mount St. Helens, plus tilt meters, sulfur dioxide meters. I don't think they'd keep a blast at Mount St. Helens secret. So, Looking at this, just a handful of small earthquakes there means the wave. The wave is coming in, and it's going in and across, and it's over to this stack of earthquakes, which is directly inside of the park at Yellowstone. The park. <sighs> Up here at the park. So at the park, Yellowstone, what's going on there? Well, don't worry, it's not going to erupt either, not now. Yellowstone gets hundreds, if not thousands, of tremors per day. Not to be confused with these earthquakes that are on the screen. Tremors are small vibrations as the plate shifts or as a magma chamber, the magma moves, and those are picked up. Again, you can watch the Yellowstone real-time charts and see all these little specks and lines that show up across it. That's the magma shifting down below. But these are actual earthquakes. These are breaks above the magma chamber in the plate, pretty shallow, of course, below the park, but shallow and uh, swarming out a little bit. Over 10 earthquakes in a spot on the park, basically, on both sides of Lake Yellowstone. One just south of the park next to the Tetons, but majority of them in the park. This is, again, one more time. I hate to bring it back up, but let's turn on the edge of the Craton one more time. Look at, look at where it goes. Northwest. See Idaho up here in the northwest? The purple part? Now look at the black arrow. It goes right over the tip of Wyoming. In the Northwest United States, you have to know your states. Geography challenged people are going to be seriously challenged right here. Okay, 
Anyway, that's the edge of the craton, and that's where the super volcano is. The weak seam in between the deformed and regular interior portion of the plate. So we're going from Washington over at Mount St. Helens, and we're flowing across Idaho over to Yellowstone. So what about the rest of the quakes here, though? Should we go look those up? I mean, one volcano is enough, but what about the other cluster on the north side of Mount St. Helens? Well, it's another volcano. It's the most well-known aside from Mount St. Helens. It's 14 kilometers north-northeast of Ashford, Washington. Mount Rainier. I'll put the coordinates in. Come along with me, class. Let's go look together, shall we? There we are. There's famous Mount Rainier. And we're down below it, of course. We're not up inside of the volcano this time. The rest of the earthquakes do go around the outside edge, the perimeter or the flank of the volcano. I pulled the blue earthquake there, but the rest are just right over to the east are directly below the crater. So here, going down around the outside edge of the volcano. Does not mean it's going to erupt either. Again, I would expect thousands of earthquakes at a spot if it was going to erupt. It's the wave going through. The same wave is causing the same size quakes down south at the other magma chamber that we know of. Up to the north, it's a line of quakes going across the Puget Sound. You see it, it's somewhat equally distributed across from the Olympic Peninsula back down into the area just south of Seattle. Over to the east, two lone quakes, and down to the southeast, two lone quakes. i kind of dreading looking them up because Sometimes we get in trouble when we go look up earthquakes. I don't know. Let's go take a look. Trouble meaning I find stuff. Sometimes there's nothing there. An innocuous earthquake in the middle of nowhere. Other times there's stuff that's nearby that we have to talk about that can get me in a little bit of heat. So, like, for instance, this right here. Earthquake epicenter right by our high voltage power lines. The only set in God knows how far literally the only set and they're the transmission lines for right here at the hydroelectric dam that's generating the power now the power being generated is very low frequency 60 hertz or 120 or 180 but most likely 60 and it's going through the her through the the hertz cycles per second think of it like beats per second most people don't understand hertz right everybody understands beats per minute in a song or something right so your beats per second at 60, low, low frequency. Anyway, it goes right through the power lines, and then down in the earth is a very low frequency, or ultra low frequency, I don't know which. I would think very low. And it's this wave, electrically induced, going through the plate. Now guess what happens when you put a power line above it, doing somewhat of the same thing, electromagnetically coming out from the power line, going down into the ground. When the two waves collide or where the two waves meet, interferometry happens, which is just a complex term to describe interfering things. The study of interfering things. But interference happens, not interferometry. Interferometry is the study of interfering things. They interfere with each other. And let's go over to the east by southeast. Go down to the 1.8. Oh, it's an explosion. An explosion. Was the other one an explosion? I dismissed it. No. The other one was an earthquake. Well, maybe there's a quarry here. Let's go take a look. You know, when you see an explosion, you should still look it up. There may be something exploding there that hasn't made the news. In this case... Farmer Joe's Indian Mounds have exploded here. What's going on here? What do we have going on through this area right here? Oh, wow. Hold on. Blowing up that... I don't like that 5G! That god dang 5G! I'm gonna blow up the tower! Oh, no. Let's go take a look. Where is it? There it is. There it is. There it is. All right. What else do we have here? 
Whoa, we have an explosion next to a cell phone tower. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's going to happen. Yeah, like they're going to allow that. Well, we can rule out a mine. We can rule out a pit mine. We can rule out a quarry. What do we have here? What are those? What are those? Greenhouses, but for what? All right. You never know up there, you know. U.S. Interior Department. What else? What, the U.S. Department of Interior has something here? That's odd. The Chadler Power Plant. Are you kidding me? They got a power plant here? Look, they do. They do. A, a little hidden one. Look at that. What is going on there? Where are the lines coming out? It's the Chandler Power Plant. Where are the lines? What is this? Federal government office. Are they buried? Are the lines buried? Okay, I'm curious now because we got an earthquake next to it. I got to see, guys. This is what happens. This is how you get in trouble. But look, trouble is relative because you just got to look it up. All right. A reclamation project. What is this? Okay, uh, they're, here, here they are talking in 2012 of not using it during certain parts of the month for allowing the salmon to go up the river. Okay, I'm just going to say it. Where are the dang lines coming off of it? And we got our earthquake right next to it. <laughs> oh, no way. Hold on. Look where else we're at. Oh, ah. forgetful me. In my old age here, I've started to slip a little. No, I just needed to back it out. I, I didn't see that we were right next to Richland here. Okay. Do you see this? I've got a place mark that if I zoom in really close, you see this right here? See what it says? Gravity Hill? I can tell you a little story. Now, you, the mainstream media is a bunch of shills, so you can never trust what they say. But uh, it's said that your car will roll uphill here at this place called Gravity Hill here in uh, Washington State. And now the skeptics say that it's because of the grading of the road versus the landscape, and it gives the optical illusion that you're rolling uphill. That people on both sides of the debate, people have gone there to go study it, and it's been many years of this. Now, a few years back, this got built. The LIGO Gravity Wave Sensing Station, with its long lasers that go down and reflect back and reflect back into the housing and they where the lasers cross they actually it's a scalar where they watch for vibration from gravity waves coming from across the universe you got to say it like that for it to be believable this thing's pointed at a right angle at this this is the former and current still super fun site but former manhattan project site the Hanford Nuclear Facility, where they built all the experimental reactors here. They broke them down, left their caskets, took all the material, put it in here in, in storage. Hanford Nuclear Waste Storage Facility and Superfund sites they got all over the place there. Anyway, they built the Gravity Wave Sensing Station, pointed at it at a right angle, and the other part pointing right down here towards where supposedly... Gravity Hill is right here, where your your car doesn't roll uphill, and it's just an optical illusion. I'm not denying that. I'm just saying it's just an optical illusion. And then we get an earthquake next to it, at the U.S. Department of Interior Chandler Power Plant, which I can't find any lines coming off this damn thing, but there should be, and it's right next to the nuclear place. I don't. Know. There's a lot going on. It's a lot going on for this damn... What is this? Was this the explosion? Is that what it was? I don't even remember. I got so sidetracked on this. It was a freaking explosion out here. Pardon me, class. 
Pardon me, class. That's another scientific term that we use here in the in the laboratory. For uh, the freaking term, say it's an acronym for for getting real. <laughs> I'll come up with a damn acronym later, class. I'm not I'm not a free freestyle rapper. Explosion. Yep, an explosion. I just I'm incredulous. I just. Let's go look up down at the southwest and get on out of here, out of Washington. This is how we digress into trouble, class. Let's go search down to the southwest. Right down here. Right at the border. Right at the border of Washington and Oregon. Okay, 4.2 previous earthquake there. Got a lot of old cemeteries out there. Got a volcanic group over to the west. I don't recall ever having to open this one. The Simcoe Volcanic Field of Pleistocene to Pliocene to Pleistocene lies east and southeast of Mount Adams. Small shield volcanoes and center cones, many erupted along a north-south fissures. Hmm. 500,000 years old. Yeah, right. Close Butte, Haggerty Butte, Kaiser Butte. Let's go look at some of these. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, these are ancient. Oh, you know, I mean, come on. They we're going back to the Pliocene or Pleistocene. These are so old. Wow. Well, I guess you could get some geothermal heat if you were to go camping up in there. Bring a drill rig with you. Build a house in there. Let's go down to the south by southwest. Now, I know this spot here, where this 0.2 is, Government Camp, Oregon. It's at the base of Mount Hood Volcano. Not a big deal, just like the others, just like St. Helens and Mount Rainier. Not going to erupt with just a single small earthquake next to it. But it's a sign of the wave, reaching as far south as Mount Hood. Next stop, Northern California, down by Mount Shasta. I would expect Shasta to get hit next. One lone earthquake over here along the coast. What's going on over there? Corvallis, Oregon. Okay, let's just go put the coordinates in and go see. It's at 58 kilometer depth. This is actually a deep earthquake for California and the West Coast. Uh, normally, they're at the surface. So for us to be down 50 kilometers down below this location, I wonder what's there. And I wonder if there's anything of significance nearby. Oregon, right below Oregon State University. Oh, nothing suspicious about that, is there? Nah. No biggie. I, you know, this is, I love doing these kind of updates. Because when, when you don't know what's there and you go look it up and you find out something like that, right? You're right below Oregon State University, for instance, or right next to it. I'll just say it. You're 50 kilometers down below the college. That's interesting since they're like one of the big earthquake studiers on the West Coast. It's like when that earthquake struck below University of Berkeley, uh, right down below the observatory. Just interesting, right? It's not related to anything, right? Let's go down to Fort... Bidwell, California. We're jumping out of Oregon and we're going straight into California. Continue looking up these quakes. I know a lot of my viewers like to look up the quakes and know what's there. I don't know what's down at Fort Bidwell, but I know whenever earthquakes strike up here in northwest Nevada or northern California. Where, actually, this is Nevada. Look at that. That's actually Nevada. They have it listed as California. I wonder why. Well, guess what? Whenever we get hit up here, we look out in the ocean. So you get hit in northwest Nevada, you look out here to the north by northwest, out on the Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone. Back to the USGS map that I showed you at the start of this update. And let me close all these other windows so we don't have anything else popping up. So the Juan de Fuca Fracture Zone on the west side of the United States. I would look out in the ocean now for something to break. Now it should be about a magnitude and a half bigger then what's on land are two magnitudes bigger, and that'll put us into the four range, maybe. Down to the south we go into California proper. 
This takes us along the coast. Over the last two days, the number of earthquakes has increased. Certainly down south, the frequency of earthquakes has gone up in the past two days in California. We were low, so like a drummer beating their drum slowly, and then now the drummer is rolling the drum fast. A bunch of stacks of earthquakes over the last 48 hours going down the coast and going down the California-Nevada border. Two things are going to happen. One, we're going to see a break up north. The other, we're going to see a break down south. It's pretty simple. In the middle, we already had a break, which I don't even think you probably heard about on the news or anything. 4.0 range earthquake struck out at the super volcano. And now a swarm has taken place out at the super volcano. Here's the 3.7 stacks of twos and ones. And I can just pull any one of these to show you the super volcano next to this. It doesn't mean there's going to be an eruption at the super volcano. I just keep saying that because most people don't know that it's there. And it's a previous broken weak point that the wave is focusing in on. Now, this past week's warning that expires tomorrow called for this to happen. This is day six of the seven-day watch for this spot, actually. I'm not, you know, again, I don't like to get on a brag or anything, but go back and watch seven days ago, basically, and here we are talking about the California-Nevada border as our spot to watch. Now it just broke. So here's Long Valley Supervolcano, 1,000 cubic kilometers of melt down below, supposedly measured with VLF, very low frequency measurements on that. And we're right along the border going over into Nevada, which over on the Nevada side of the border over here, we have another series of volcanoes, Blair Cone, Gold Field, and right along here is where the quake struck. I'll, I'll say it's closer to the supervolcano than it is to Blair Cone, and I would definitely lend it being towards the supervolcano right next to it. I mean, if this was Yellowstone and you get a swarm next to it, you would think it's related to Yellowstone. And it is. It is related to the supervolcano that's there. It's a wave passing through it, and it's causing a swarm to break out. Now, a new swarm has broken out down here in Nevada, and we're going to pull the biggest of the bunch down at next to Beatty. Beatty. Beatty Beatty. Let's go see what's there. If you're new here, please look at the screen right about now. You're going to see beautiful foothills. Nevada, desert, open. But wait, what are these? Those are all craters. Must be some kind of aerial bombing range. Unfortunately not. All of these are underground nuclear tests. Here's one. U.S. Nuke Operation Orlock. 20 kilotons on February 16th, 1977. One of just hundreds that were done here in the valley. And they blew away the town here at Operation Rise Line at Doomtown, as they call it. Nuke test sites. That's where we are with the new swarm. Now, it's not any nuking going on there now. These are man-made faults that are being activated by this wave that's passing through the plate. As this wave passes through the nuke sites, guess what? The wave peak comes up into the weak points of the crust that have been fractured from the nukes over the God knows how long they've been doing them, 40 years. And we get a new outbreak there as well, about the same size that's breaking out at the super volcano. What's the difference between Mother Nature fracturing the plate with a super volcano and humans fracturing the plate with a boatload of nukes? Turns out the wave doesn't care. It will seek out both spots as it's going through this area and drop off two swarms along the way. It'll also hit the volcanoes along the way. Let's go back over along the coast, and that's where this other stack of earthquakes is, up to the north. Up on the northwest side of California along the coast, the geysers. I wonder what's there. Let's go see. I wonder what is there. It's called the geysers. Now, on the side of Geysers, California, Geyserville, is this clear lake volcanic field with Mount Kanakti at the middle and so forth all the way around the outside. Now, here are all these geothermal turbines where they are injecting human sewage down into the ground to steam it off 
to give you electricity. Hot Springs Creek, too. I mean, there are hot springs there, but they are injecting water to steam it off and leave the nasties down in the ground. Our forecast for this week calls for a flare-up on the creeping section of the San Andreas. Looking for the creeping section to get a 4.0 range quake. I don't think that'll be that big of a deal for the people in California, like I said when I issued the warning. Creeping section next to Monterey Bay. Hasn't happened yet. The highest we went was, what, 2.0? 2. I'm two magnitudes under, 100 times less power so far. We only have a few more days to go in the warning. It might be a flop for me here along the coast, but the line of quakes goes down here, goes down to the south, and stops. Now, we're stopping there. The wave is being reflected into itself right now. It's not going across the valley much. 1.9 across the valley, that's it. We'll get down to the swarm at Ridgecrest where I struck out last week. I issued a warning for Ridgecrest last week, and it didn't hit. Nothing hit. Very odd. Anyway, so here we are. We're along the coast. The coast is now getting hit. You can see the line of quakes. It's a diagonal line. This is the famous San Andreas Fault, so it shouldn't be too much of a shock. But when we get down here to the south, these quakes, where do they go to? Well, they stop. They pick back up, We or we pick back up down to the south. But what's there? We haven't jumped over into the valley yet. But over in the valley, there's something right next to here. Let me show you. So the quakes come down right to here, just beyond a town called Parkfield, to Sholami, Cholame, Kolami. Anyway, between Parkfield and Cholame. Now right over to the east, we're going to jump over. It hasn't happened yet. Earthquakes are going to jump over to our drill points over to the east. Oil and gas. And there are tens of thousands of drill points here to jump over to. Starting right here. They've drilled right along the San Andreas. All the way down it. Right up to it. Somebody somewhere knew something about pressure transfer. And the wave back in the 19... Well, what do you think? 1920s? Probably about 100 years ago. And they started doing all the drilling here on purpose next to the San Andreas to draw the seismic wave over into the valley instead of down to the south to L.A., right? Wouldn't you think that's why they would drill all of this? Since this is the San Andreas, and they drill all of it right up to the San Andreas, wouldn't you think someone in the past would have noticed that the seismic flow was coming over to where they drilled? And when you drill a whole mountain range, you know, the mountain range used to look like this. And now it looks like this. Why does it look like that? They scraped off every single hilltop and side. Now, maybe they were looking for something when they just used the oil pumping operation as an excuse. I don't know. But what I do know is that we go all the way back up here and the quakes that I was talking about have come down to the spot where the drill points start. So, past examples prove that we jump over to the drill points with a new quake. That's significant in size. Bigger than everything that's coming down right now. Like the combined total of the whole wave jumps over into the valley. We're waiting for it. It hasn't happened yet. Let's go over to the east side of the valley and go see what's going on there. It is a 1.9, but it's a microquake over across the valley. What's going on over across the valley? Is there anything worth looking at, worth noting, that's there? There are things I found over here on the east side of the valley that are worth noting. Wait, what's this? Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Dude. See? Okay, man. Like, all right. Now, now here's the deal, guys. Here's the deal. If I find anything, I get credit. First of all. Okay. So... As I'm doing a real-time look, if I find some kind of weird Native American petroglyphs in the hillsides or some kind of wall that's built here into the landscape that goes on for miles on end and stops on the hilltop like that, or if I find stuff like this, where there's no way in hell that a farmer got out there and scraped all that away, because it's only been 150 years since they found California, right? So, for instance... When you start seeing something like this and you realize that that's not natural, 
because it comes over and stops and then some carry on that somebody a long time ago thought it'd be a great idea to sculpt whole mountains. Looks to me like we might have ourselves a case of a slight mystery going on here. Farmer Joe didn't get out here with his tractor. That's a thousand foot drop off. And it wasn't done by hand. There's no way in hell. Look at that. It's covered in f old trees. California trees too. Out in the middle, middle of the desert. Wow. No wonder they're dr drilling and excavating the heck out of the whole area. Now, I find a lot of these spots when an earthquake strikes next to it or below it. I found enough weird... Oh, look, a quarry is over here next to it. Is this a quarry blast of some kind? No, this is down at 10 kilometer depth. So we can rule out the quarry that's next to this. But what do you want to bet that they're quarrying out one of these spots to get the stuff out? The hidden things that would be in there. And what do you want to bet that dams are built to hide certain things that you might not be wanting to be shown or they might not want to show you but when I find stuff like this I'm glad I said I you know if I, if I find something I want because it's just too weird when you zoom in and you find something and then you see there's some mysterious shapes that are in the landscape there that don't make sense on their own it's happened enough that I knew to say it ahead of time I you know what is that a form of a forecast of some kind my megalithic forecast. What is this? Is this a geoglyphic forecast? Can it be? Leave it up to me, and it shall be so. Let's go down to the south, down to the L.A. Basin. Speaking of hiding old stuff, how about all those old pumping operations down there in L.A.? Or how about the gold? Do you guys know this? The gold. Uh, I, I, we won't talk about it unless an earthquake strikes back down at Glen Avon. But let's go look into Baldwin Hills where these quakes are being reported out of and see what's there. The location, Baldwin Hills. What's at the spot? Oil. Oil and gas again. Look at all the pumping that's going on here. Lots of oil and gas. Big bucks. Now, this is the remnant of the old oil pumping operation that goes all or went all the way down to the airport and to the refinery that they've now converted to a refinery. This was the original old oil fields of L.A. That's where we are. That's where all the quakes are going from what I just looked up down to the east, southeast, down to the coast. Now, out in the ocean, there is one. Well, there's two earthquakes out in the ocean. Let's go see what's out there. San Pedro Valley, Uzbekistan has now been hit. I don't know what size they're saying. A felt quake has been reported in Uzbekistan. We will go see if that gets reported. I don't know if it's a significant size quake or not. Okay. Well, here's our earthquake epicenter. Here's Santa Catalina Island, which I've had the pleasure of going to before. And here are our offshore rigs for oil and gas again. Look at that and all its beauty. Platform Ellen. Next to it, over to the west by about a mile, is Platform what? What's the name of this one? Oh, I don't have a name on it. Wonderful. All right. Big oil right there. Big oil pumping, and we're right next to it by a few miles. I always look 6 to 10 miles. So I, it might be more than 6 to 10 miles, so let's just measure and see. 13 miles. That's on the edge of what I would consider to be acceptable. They can drill by many, many miles for ground-based pumping operations. I would think for out in the ocean, maybe even more. Over to the east, it's a spattering of quakes going down across the San Jacinto Fault. Nothing's changed here in the past, what, eight years? A slow slip has continually taken place, spattered with a few fours and fives down to the south by Salton Sea Volcano down at the south tip of this body of water. The rest of the earthquakes, just a handful. 
going down along the border. It's been pretty quiet in Southern California, Northern California, Eastern California. Where are all your earthquakes, guys? Where are they? The flow is going over to the east, obviously. It's going over to Texas and Colorado. I mean, we're seeing the earthquakes that we would normally expect down in Southern California take place over in Colorado and Texas. That is just a given. It's, fa it's fairly obvious that's what's taking place. The flow is going over to the east and around the edge of the craton to the east. But when there's a big push and it comes down from the north, first of all, you can see it coming like a flooding river. And we have a flooding river going right now. Now, this gets me down to my miss last week down here at Ridgecrest. A new swarm has broken out just west of Ridgecrest. Let's go see what's there. Birdfish. Birdfish. Brah. Brah. Bodfish, dude. It's bodfish. I said bod. You say bod. Come on. Let's go see what's there, though. Is there something significant here? Now, do you guys remember a few years ago, a series of earthquakes broke out just like this, right next to this location? And then a big fire broke out just west of Paiute Peak. Peak. I say that right? Paiute? Piute? So, Paiute Peak. And over to the west, look at that. I've got it marked from 2020, but huge fires broke out after our earthquakes broke out here first. I had been on that day talking about the earthquakes here, and I'm like, hey, take a look. Uh, our earthquakes here next to Paiute Peak. Peak. Man, I used to know a guy online named Paiute Peak. So I keep saying it over and over again. Anyway, Miracle Hot Springs is there. Is there anything else here of, oh, Boy, I sure was, I was sure sleuthing that day, wasn't I? Turns out there's a mine here. Underneath those houses. Really weird, right? Okay, all right, so, swarm there. A day late and a dollar short. So, it went up to 2.7 to 3.0. I warned for up to five. So, we're two magnitudes under, and we're five days late. But the wave finally came in. It did. It's under way under what expected. But same time that it didn't go down to Ridgecrest. Same sized earthquake struck over to the east. Southern Colorado, I already showed it to you, 4.8. So the flow went to the east instead of the south. It's like a fork in a river. We expect it, but I was expecting it to go down here and break instead of go over to the east and break. I'm still learning myself, refining the method myself. Biggest earthquake of the bunch down to the south is a 3.5, and I'd like to pull the coordinates on this and just put them in, go show you what's there. Again, this is for the new viewers, long-time viewers already know it's at the south tip of Salton Sea. But a new person might be here who may have never looked before and not know about the volcano down at the south tip of Salton Sea. All the drill points down here where they're getting steam to generate electricity. Or know about the other geothermal features over here as well as the storage domes or salt domes as they they used to store stuff in them. See it says gas domes? Baby gas dome? Okay. They actually made an attempt to try and store natural gas in them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's where the biggest of the earthquakes is. Down to the south, right along the border, Mexico. We're actually on the Mexico side of the border or on the... Well, I'm sorry. We're on the U.S. side of the border within a few hundred feet of the Mexico border. There's something there, too. See where it says Cal Exico? Right across the border and here on both sides. Insane power generation. These are all solar panels. Instead of doing farming... They're straight up replacing their farming fields with solar panels. So, power generation, whether it's coming from a hydroelectric dam, a nuclear power plant, a geothermal plant, or from solar panels, if you're doing a lot of power generation, that very low frequency, 
spreads out just like you would imagine down into the blade. The electromagnetic nature of that goes down into the plate, and I believe, I can't prove it yet, that the two waves interact, and that's what attracts the earthquake to where the very low frequency power is being generated or transmitted along. Now, over to the east, I already showed you, did I show you southern Colorado? Did I? Yeah, I showed you Trinidad. Now, there's a bunch of drill points there. Do I need to show those to you, I guess, is the next question. All the earthquakes, every single earthquake from southern Colorado down through Texas, back up through Oklahoma right here, every single one of these is next to a drill point, even in south Texas down here. We could pick any one of them randomly, zoom in on it, and you will have an oil well right next to it within a few miles. And it's not just one, hundreds. Southern Colorado, Texas, already known for it, Oklahoma, you guys already know about it as well. Once we go over to the New Madrid seismic zone, we are not drilled at all. There are no drill points on the New Madrid. However, I have a warning going on the New Madrid. Two more days in the warning for up to 4.0. It's pretty rare. Only happens maybe twice a year at the most. So we got the warning going from my neck of the woods here on the New Madrid. But look where the earthquake just struck. Ah, no biggie. I'll let you all just look at the screen for a minute. Your teacher's just going to kick back here in class. You can tell I'm back up from the microphone now. Sipping my coffee as you take in the wondrous view here on the screen of the Mississippi River in the town of New Madrid, Missouri. Or, well, Howardville. Here's New Madrid. So, what's in Howardville? Why is the earthquake striking there? Well, let me zoom in and show you the large Native American mound here and the Mounds Cemetery, and look at the school next to it. Ah, you know, they build all the schools like that. That's not, you know, I don't think any, I don't think it means anything to you. And the graveyard there, ah, you know, the fact that it's called Mound Cemetery, maybe we're just showing honor. Anyway, the earthquakes that are striking next to this spot is what drew my eye to the large Native American mound that's there and the large power lines that are also there going across the mounds can't be overlooked. But the fact that we've got the big, large Native American mounds there right next to the town of New Madrid, and the town of New Madrid has some very odd things next to it that would need to be discussed at a later time. This is made out of the mountains, by the way. But when you have something like this next to the town of the New Madrid big earthquake that happened all the way back in 1811, you've got the Native American mounds that are there and the earthquake striking next to it. I have to bring that up, that it's like the how many times is this going to happen statement that I have to ask. How many times am I going to be zooming in on a quake and have some very odd Native American or earlier feature there. It's getting very bizarre. I was never into this topic. I've had to become interested in this topic because of the number of places I'm finding that are like this. And it's not just in the United States. It's it's all over the world, guys. All right, so where are we? We're down here. Let me turn on my borders and labels. That would probably help me ever so slightly. Ridgely is the name of the town. I wonder what that little thing of water is there. Anyway, we're on the other... I, I'll just say it. We're on the other side of town from uh, New Madrid. We are literally on the other side, so it's just a matter of a few miles. There may be something else of significance here than nearby that I just don't know about yet. They are taking the time to do some quarrying on some of these... Look at that. But... That's neither here nor there. I can't prove anything without a place mark on it from an outside corroborated source. Now, let's talk about Ohio because I have a warning going at the Ohio-Pennsylvania Porter region. The earthquake which struck in Ohio, we need to look up and see if there's anything there. Now, the depth on the quake is down at 5.5 kilometer depth. But 
in light of the train derailment, in light of all the other things going on, I want to see if there's something there. There might not be anything here. The only way to know is to look. What's this? Rice Hollow. Rice Hollow Historical Landmark. I don't know what that is. Patriot, Ohio is the location that just got hit. Great. Okay, let's back it out and take a look. Waterloo. Great. Anything else here nearby? Greater area? Our fracking operations are all the way up to the east by northeast. I have to look to see if there's any nearby fracking operations because they did start doing fracking in Ohio. And you can see it when they do it. You can find their drill points and find the pads and the tanks and the pumps. And, you know, again, you have to know what to look for. You would look for pad. You would look for things like this, and then look into them for any kind of tanks or pumps or jacks on the hilltops, or uh, that's what you look for. In case you don't know what to look for. But I don't see anything like that around here. I don't see any large spattering of drill points. If any of you guys know about any, please feel free to contact me and let me know. But as far as I can tell, there are no drill points here. This then would lead us, unless there's electrical generation nearby. I haven't looked for any kind of hydroelectric dams or on the Ohio River. Oh, no. This is a lock and dam. A Fitch hatchery. It doesn't look like they're doing electrical generation out of this lock and dam. Makes you wonder why, right? Here's a question. Why wouldn't they constantly have, like, every 20 miles, a huge hydroelectric dam that regulates the flow of the river and provides unlimited power to everyone? Too expensive. That's it. Okay, so enough complaining now. So we're on the edge of the Craton all the way across. We have our drill points over to the west and down to the south. We have the New Madrid moving next to the Indian Mounds. We're over here in Ohio. I can't find anything there of any significance that looks out of place or odd. There's no power generation there. There is a historical place mark there, but it's just for some kind of historical, I don't know, event which happened. If you guys know of anything else, please let me know, and I'll update accordingly. I know Ohio and the Ohio River right here is well known for all kinds of Native American and so forth settlements, but as far as I know, there's nothing here. But that doesn't say much, because I don't know much in regards to Ohio. I know there's been a bunch of train derailments, which is why we have to pay attention. Absolutely must pay attention. Let's go up to the east by far northeast, up into Canada, and wrap this up up in Canada. Ah, in the northeast Canada. Oh, Canada. Come on, guys, sing it with me. No? I don't know. Am I, I, oh, I'm supposed to sing it in French. Oh, shit. How do you say oh, shit in French? Oui? Uh, I don't know, man. I'm from the United States. I didn't know. I didn't know. They get their pitchforks out. Okay. There we go. There we go. Come on. I'm joking around, guys. You can come on down here to St. Louis. It's not Louis. It's St. Louis. And there's nothing of any significance to show you. But it is a good way to wrap it up. To show you an earthquake that's just not related to any kind of power generation, not related to any kind of drill point. As far as I can tell, this is on the edge of the Craton as well. And I would call it a natural earthquake when that happens. When we're, I mean, all the earthquakes are quote-unquote natural as the wave is going through the area, but 
they wouldn't break along the way. The wave wouldn't break. It would go across the plate and eventually build up into a large quake, maybe, but it wouldn't break down in Texas and in Oklahoma. Instead, it would get to the New Madrid and then break there and go up the East Coast and break up the East Coast. Maybe break over in the Northwest. But the drill points are, I think, attracting the wave to the drill points. And that's why we're seeing the equal spaced wave come up next to the drill points. For the same reason, it's going down the San Andreas and jumping off and going to go over into the drill points in California. If you give this wave a way to go, it's going to go to the weak points. Okay. All right. Anything else? Did I miss anything? Did anything strike? Oh, Central America and South America. Yeah, I I talked about that at the start of the update, but Mexico, I haven't really mentioned much lately. Seems like Mexico's gone kind of quiet seismically. That's not good. One of the more seismically prone areas on the planet goes quiet. That's not good. You want to see constant movement in areas that are normally seismically prone. When they go quiet, it builds. Speaking of going quiet and building, it had gone somewhat quiet here in the Mideast after our 7.0 last week. Where were all the aftershocks? Right? It's a good question to ask. Tajikistan got hit. What happened? Where were all the aftershocks? Turkey. You saw what happened in Turkey when the 7 hit there. 7 hits in Tajikistan. Two earthquakes get reported afterwards or something. Is it that they're not showing us? Because it, w- it, would, it would put the number of earthquakes per month like up through the roof. There would be like 20,000 earthquakes in a month if they counted all the quakes in Tajikistan and all the quakes in Turkey. So they just stopped counting the earthquakes in Tajikistan, maybe. And then, therefore, we didn't see the spread taking place going down across over to the 6.5 that we would have seen if they were reporting. Right? Ah, class, you're going to have to start looking at the quote-unquote professionals with a, the skeptical eye that you'd watch a YouTube video maker with. Not joking. You need to apply the skepticism that you would put to me to them. All right, now, uh, 2.22 p.m. Central Time. It's the perfect time to sign off. Today is the 21st. If it was the 3.22, we would have problems. Tomorrow's Skull and Bones Day. Three twenty-two. I know, I know. Anyway, watch out. There's all kinds of crazy stuff going on in the world. You need to have an emergency kit. You need to have a plan. You need to know what to do when an emergency happens. You need to either have a place to shelter, shelter in place, and you need to have the stuff that'll get you through. And I mean for a while. Food and water. A way of self-defense. To protect yourself from people who don't have food and water and will try and take it from you if they know you have it. You also need to have flashlight and batteries for in case you're without power. Maybe even an extra series of battery banks to power your things for a short period of time. And then a way to recharge your battery banks. Some kind of solar or something. I know you're going to have to put some money into this. You know, Instead of buying that new whatever, you're going to have to put some money into this crap. I guess you could go take out a loan. Do you have to pay it back, though? Maybe just start one of those stupid startups out in the West Coast and you don't have to pay it back. It'll just bail you out, dude. You'd be like, oh, I had to get all my solar for my freaking thing. I don't have a bailout. I'm going to go broke. And they're like, oh, okay, well, we'll bail you out. It's okay. All you need is start a stupid company that does it. Anyway, I'm sarcastic as hell when it comes to that kind of stuff. But I'm going to tell you, you need to know what to do when an earthquake hits. That's probably a good idea. You might think you know everything, but when an earthquake hits, are you going to run around screaming earthquake? Because everybody already knows an earthquake's hitting. They all look at you, they're like, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. Of course an earthquake's hitting, why are you screaming it? Yeah, I've had, I kind of had a rough day. Feeling a little under the weather. Feeling a little sick, a little complainy today. 
Your teacher's feeling a little complaining. Got a little chip on my shoulder. Sorry. I got delivered very bad news today on top of feeling sick. Anyway, you don't want to hear my sob story. I don't want to have to hear yours if there's a disaster. You know what I mean? You need to have a plan and be prepared just in case. Food and water into a bag would be at least the basics. Think about your loved ones. Think about your children. You might want to have a separate bag just for them with maybe even some sweets and treats and coloring books and other things. Because when the adults are freaking out, could you imagine what it would be like to be a kid while you're watching all the adults melt down? I never had to go through any kind of disaster as a kid. Thank God. But I could only imagine what it would be like if I saw my parents who are normally somewhat secure, like freaking. So you might want to have the things that you need for your children. And maybe even if they're old enough to get them involved on planning the bag. Like, hey, if you could only, if we had to leave really quick and you could only take one of these toys with you, which one would you take? And ask them. And they'd be like, they might have never thought about it that way. And then another thing I would suggest for children is that there's so many children who are afraid of the dark and afraid of the closet and afraid of under the bed and all that stuff. You could start the preparation thing at a young age by giving them an emergency kit to use to investigate those things. So if you're scared and you're worried there's something under the bed or in the closet, you've got your emergency kit here right next to the bed. The drill is get the flashlight. Go look. Bust him. I mean, seriously, you can breed that into your child at a young age of being prepared by simple steps like that. I know it sounds hokey, but I think it'll work. I don't have kids. I don't know. There's a million trolls that are like, yes, thank God. I'm going to be cloned, guys. That's the problem. They didn't do it to me already, though. They'll never be able to get the personality right. All right, I'll be back. I will be back. You guys be safe. Have a plan and be prepared. Now I'm going to announce a few things before we go. In case you don't know, I'm sponsoring a few people and giving to a few people. So I'm giving to, and I would encourage you guys to also look into charities like this, Our Ladies Inn, and that's based out of here in St. Louis, and they take care of mothers and children and infants and then I'm also, on the opposite end of the spectrum, sponsoring Dark Horse Genetics out of Colorado. Jason, the creator of the Bruce Buffer strain. Or Bruce Banner strain and Bruce Buffer. Really nice guy. The guy is great. He comes across as a little Kurt online. But don't let that dissuade you. And if you're not into either of those things, I'm going to be sponsoring a few other people doing completely unrelated things to either of those two things. And that's going to be coming in the next few months. So I'm trying to get the earthquake preparation thing out there to as many people as possible while also helping various groups. It's a good idea. It's a, it's a worthy goal. I don't know if I'll complete it, but I'm already done too. So hopefully we can help more people while at the same time get earthquake awareness out there to the world. And if neither of those are your cup of tea, don't worry, guys. I'll get you covered here in just a little bit. I'm always open to suggestions, too, on things that you might think be worthy of supporting. 2.28 p.m. Central Time. I've blathered on long enough. Word up and peace out. And look out for this over on YouTube. Watch out for this over on YouTube. Peace out.